What's up Guiding Bolt fans, this is Nick and today I wanted to suggest some options for DMs out there whose players have just completed or are about to complete the Lost Mine of Phandelver. Now there are literally countless possibilities here, so just for a second pretend that you're Dungeon Master Doctor Strange sitting down in a yoga pose with the Time Stone. That's how many options there are. Now, thankfully, instead of only one good outcome, the odds are a little more in our favor. However, since there are so many choices, we're going to limit this video to just five. I'm going to cover a couple of paths that I've taken with my players, the one that I feel Wizards has laid out for us, a full-length 5e adventure, and the 5e Swiss Army Knife book of adventures. Now, please don't make the mistake of just blindly picking an adventure for the sake of choosing. Instead, let the players choose their destiny even if they don't know that they are. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Essentially, just listen to your players. As they're progressing through the Lost Mine of Phandelver, they're going to be dropping hints and making suggestions, again, even if they don't know that they are. So, for instance, a group that I recently ran through Lost Mine of Phandelver had some recent knowledge, or just knowledge, of Forgotten Realms from books, video games, board games, etc. And as a result, they knew that they were near Neverwinter, uh, or at least that it was within close proximity to Phandalin, um, being in the Sword Coast. And during the course of the adventure, multiple times they talked about getting out of Podunk Phandalin and going to a real city such as Neverwinter. And that actually brings us to our first option. My first suggestion is the Neverwinter campaign setting. Now this is probably going to be the most difficult route to take as well as the most spendy. As the picture suggests, I uh, used the 4th edition Neverwinter campaign setting as my template. Now you can pick that up on eBay for around $49.99, give or take, uh, but it is a worthwhile addition to any D&D collection, so I recommend picking it up regardless. Uh, now it's important to note that this book is not a written out adventure like you may be used to with a lot of the other 5e material. It basically gives you a bunch of, a bunch of information about the region, uh, some of the big players aka bad guys as well as good guys, areas of interest and just basically lets you run with it. Now this is great for maintaining that sandbox feel but it also requires more work on your part, primarily dealing with maps, NPCs and monsters. Now thankfully there are some awesome resources out there to help you out. So for NPCs, check out homebrewery.naturalcrit.com. They've taken a lot of the monsters and NPCs that your players will encounter and already converted them to 5e stat blocks. Now for maps, I just borrowed some from other campaigns. So for instance, when my players visited the visited Castle Never to search for the Crown of Neverwinter, I just used the map, the map of Axholm from the Essentials Kit. I used all the same rooms and I just edited the descriptions and tossed in my own monsters. Um, I, I really enjoy this campaign setting and I really think that it's a fun option for your players. It gives them that big city feel, there's plenty to do, and even a chance that they could run into Drist or Jaraxle. Now honestly you could probably run this campaign forever because the bad guys list includes the Thans, the Netherese, Cult of the Dragon, the Ashmat. Ashmadi, uh, or cultists of Asmodeus, and the Abolethic, Abolethic Sovereignty, just to name a few. Number two on the list is the Lost Laboratory of Koalish, which you can pick up on D&D Beyond for around $9.99. This adventure is designed to carry PCs from 5th through 10th level, which works out really great because the PCs will likely be around level 5 after completing the Lost Mine of Phandelver. Now, I feel that this adventure is a little short, so I wouldn't actually progress them all the way up to level 10. Instead, I would go up to around level 8 or so, because there's a really fun follow-up adventure that you can plot hook the heck out of, which we'll cover in just a second. Now, as great as the Lost Mine of Phandelver is, there isn't a single player that isn't disappointed when they find out that the Forge of Spells or the Brazier of Green Flame isn't fully functional. If they say otherwise, they're lying. So naturally, they're going to want to find a way to fix it, and that's where Koalish comes in. Being one of the greatest inventors of all time, there's a good chance that he probably knew about this place. Perhaps the PCs find a broken down apparatus of Koalish, or maybe even some of his used up or expired fuel cells. With a discoverer like that, 
and a little bit of lore about the Gnomish Evoker, the PCs could conclude that Koalish may be able to assist them with restoring the forge. Now if you really don't want them fixing the forge, which I didn't in my campaign, you may allow it to recharge the fuel cells that they find. This is a great constellation prize as they can use it to power Koalish's inventions, such as the powered armor or four spikes, or maybe even their own uh, inventions. I would just limit the number of cells they find, and then as a downtime activity they could hire someone or travel back to the forge themselves to recharge cells and continue to use their items. This should prevent PCs from getting too out of hand with all their souped up gadgets. Now I mentioned a follow up to this adventure, and that is White Plume Mountain, which is actually a funhouse dungeon that brings players from 8th through 9th level. Now the reason I like this as a follow up is because it has Stenmir, who is a vampire locked in a walking coffin of Koalish's design, who is introduced in the Lost Laboratory adventure. I would actually leave Stenmir out of the Lost Laboratory, just so you can use it as a plot hook to segue into the White Plume Mountain. The third option involves picking up the Essentials Kit. Now you can pick up the cheaper version for $15.99 on Amazon, or go with the deluxe package of $39.99, and that's going to get you six sets of dice, printable materials, and some other cool stuff. Now because of the extra goodies, I would definitely suggest going with the physical box set, and then just using the code on the box to unlock the materials on D&D Beyond. The awesome thing about the kit is that it can be used as either a solo adventure to take PCs from level 1 up through level 12, or you can do what I'm going to suggest and run them through Lost Mines of Fandelver up to level 5, and then move right into the Stormlord's Wrath section of the Essentials Kit and that takes the PCs from 7th through 9th level. Now if your PCs are level 5 after completing the Lost Mine of Fandelver, they may be a little under leveled to pick up right away at Stormlords. Uh, and if that's the case, it's not really a problem because the first section of the Essentials Kit, which is titled Dragon of Ice Spire, Ice Spire Peak, has plenty of fill filler material and it takes place right in the Fandolin area. So you can just use some of the resources there to help them get the uh, little bit of extra experience points that they're going to need to pick up with the next sec section. Now to someone that hasn't started Lost Mine of Fandelver yet, or to a DM that hasn't started running it, I would actually suggest picking up both the Essentials Kit and the Starter Kit, which includes Lost Mine of Fandelver, at the same time, and then you can use both of those resources together to run your adventure. The fourth suggestion is a little dark, or should I say underdark, and that is the Out of the Abyss campaign, which is a 5th edition adventure. You can pick up a digital copy on D&D Beyond for $24.99, and actually, just in case you're wondering, a lot of the 5e adventures are that same price. Truth be told, I really, really like this option. This adventure takes place primarily in the Underdark, uh, which is in the process of being overrun by Demogorgon and other powerful demon lords. There are multiple ways that you could steer your PCs here. One option would be just to sprinkle in a few demons into Wave Echo Cave. Uh, why are creatures like this here? The PCs better investigate. If the PCs engage in dialogue with Neznar, aka the Black Spider, he may hint that the demons are invading the Underdark, and that might even be the reason that he's in Wave Echo Cave, is trying to find uh, magical items to aid in their fight against the demons. The third option, which I think is the most fun, is that the PCs get their butts whooped by Neznar, and they wake up in the cells of Velve. hopefully I pronounced that right, uh, as prisoners. You'll likely need to adjust some of the early on encounters to account for the players being 5th level, as the adventure is meant for players from 1 through 15th level, but that's the easy part. The rest of the adventure is nicely laid out for you, and there is no lack of danger or excitement lurking in the dark. The fifth option is a little bit of a cop-out because it's actually providing multiple adventure paths, but it's the perfect option for the newer DM who doesn't want to quite bite off a full-sized adventure just yet. For suggestion number five, I'm recommending picking up Tales from the Yawning Portal, which is also a $24.99 price tag on D&D Beyond. This book is a collection of multiple smaller adventures. I actually mentioned one of the adventures contained 
contained in the book previously, which was White Plume Mountain. Uh, in total, the book contains seven of these smaller adventures, ranging from levels 1 through 14 plus. Uh, the two easiest ones to tie in that all also match the level requirements are going to be the Hidden Shrine of Tomochin and the Forge of Fury. To tie either of those adventures into the Lost Mine of Fandelver, you can quite simply just use the map that's recovered from room number 14 after defeating Mormask the Wraith, or whatever other plot hooks you come up with. Personally, I'd recommend the Shrine as it's a good challenge and there are some really fun rooms in this adventure. Specifically room number 29, the Tomb of Pelota, where the PCs can enjoy a rousing game of Pelota Ball while getting pelted with magic missiles. Ah, good times. Alright Dungeon Delvers, that's all I have for you today. Hopefully you found one or all of these suggestions helpful. Remember, there are countless possibilities, so go with whichever route you think is going to be the most enjoyable for you and your players. If you have any questions on how to tie any of these in, or any other uh, ideas, just go ahead and throw it down in the comments below. Uh, also, let me know what routes you've already taken uh, that have played out or worked well. Don't forget to subscribe, because one of us will be back here next week with even more tabletop talk. Table, tabletop talk? Ta yeah, tabletop talk. Wowzer, that's a tongue twister. Anyways, until next time.